G'day mates, tonight I'm just going to make you a video to show you how a DC-DC charger works with the trigger wire for cars that have low voltage alternators. So a lot of people get confused by how they work and it's, it's not too difficult to understand but I figure this video might sort of help people figure out how it actually works. Right, I'm just going to go over the setup a little bit. So we've got a BC-DC 1240D um, Red Arc charger that's hooked up to a battery that's in this box. Got another battery over here just to kind of emulate if it was in a car, pushing 12 volt into the input side. Um, and then on the 12 volt power supply we've got up the top, we've actually got a blue trigger wire that's plugged in. Now, what actually happens with that, this is why you read manuals, but anyway, hopefully you can see that. I'll just try and get a better focus on it. Well. There we go. Basically, it's just saying that if you're in a 12 volt system, that the blue wire, once it senses that you've got 12 volt or above, oh, and it's it's not really 12 volt and above, but when you hit 12 volt, it's going to turn the charger on. When it goes below 12 volt, the charger should turn off. Now, in some cars, I've actually seen it where when you turn the car off, you can press the lock button in your car a second time, and it'll actually make the voltage go down to zero volts, and then everything turns off. Now, you'll see when we do this test that it's a bit inconsistent because I think what the DC-DC charger tries to do is when it loses that uh, voltage and goes below 11.9, it tries to maintain charge for a little while before it fully shuts off. But I'll just show you what I'm talking about once I turn it on. Righto, so just going to demonstrate what goes on with this. So at the moment, you can see that we've got basically zero volts going through. I'm just going to turn this on. So the power supply is on now, but I've only got it turned to 10.13 uh, volts. So what I'm going to do, start adjusting it up. Let's try and keep the DC-DC charger in the same frame. So 12.4 or 11.4, just about to go over 12. Now what should happen is the DC-DC charger, as you can see now, has detected that it's got 12 volt on the trigger wire, which is your blue wire that's down here. So cars that have low voltage alternators, that's the wire that you wanna use. Um, and just put it on any sort of accessory volt source that's in the car, so cigarette lighter socket, where you, when your car's on accessories, that it actually turns on that, that port. And um, that's what will trigger your char charger to turn on or off. Now, what's a little bit odd though, and this is what I was talking about earlier, was we're gonna back the voltage back down. Apparently at 11.9 is when the charge is meant to turn off, but as you can see, it hasn't. So I'm not sure if that's just a bit of a time delay um, and it just goes off after a little while, but you can still demonstrate as well. If we actually turn off the secondary 12 volt supply, the charger will actually turn off because it doesn't have any supply going to the um, to the charger anymore. So you can see where the light, lights all just went off. That's because there's no supply going there anymore. So in cars that have got the two-stage locking system where you click the lock twice and it stops 12 volt going to all your ports, if you've got your blue wire hooked up, it should work fine. Um, at the moment, it looks like though if you've... Uh, got it set up where you've got one of the ports that doesn't actually fully turn off when you lock the car. The um, Unless I've done something wrong, the blue wire doesn't actually seem to trigger properly. So I'm just going to do it again. We're up over the 12 volts. Takes a little bit of time for it to trigger. There we go. So at 12.78 currently. Just going to dull it down. Manual says at 11.9 volts it should shut off, so I think it's 11.9. Yep, 11.9 volts turn off. Let's just wait for a bit and see what happens. Just trying to get the focus right, sorry. Here we go.
The only thing that I can think of here is because um, we've got this secondary battery kind of trying to emulate what had happened in a normal car. Maybe it's because it's sensing two different sets of voltages where if it's um, you know hooked up in your own car, you've only got the one supply and it's just the voltage is getting, getting delivered throughout the system. So maybe that's what makes a difference. But just wanted to show how they work essentially, which is basically once they go get 12 volt on the, the blue wire that's hooked up to your DC-DC charger, that's what tells it to start charging. So if you've got a low voltage alternator, that's how you can make that work. Um, now, a lot of people have just said, you know, just get a VSR and turn off smart charge, which I'll look at these and go, well, there's no real need to. But if you don't have a smart volt, uh, a low voltage or smart alternator capable DC-DC charger, you have to do it because these will not actually turn on or won't charge properly when you don't have smart charge turned off. And the reason for that is when you have smart charge turned off, your alternator will actually push out a higher voltage. So it'll actually start the charging cycle. The reason why you're using these blue wires here is to actually start the charging cycle without relying on the voltage is getting pushed from the alternator. Because in a modern car, it's not always the high, you know, 14.8 volts. So just sort of make this quick video to explain that pretty simply. And like a lot of people pointed out to me when I first said, why don't you just use the, you know, use the smart wire? And people said, well, realistically, a VSR is a lot, a, a lot cheaper option. So if you're for just getting into, you know, kitting out your car, sometimes using a VSR and one of the um, older DC DC chargers is still a good option, um, just because then you don't have to spend as much money on one of the, the low voltage capable ones. Cheers, guys. Have a good day.